Hi there guys. I had to take Xander to his appointment. It was a post appointment for his surgery and it looks really good so we have follow up in six months. And as I'm driving home, I was thinking about what it was like going through waiting to be diagnosed. I posted a video and I noticed in the comments where people were talking about not being diagnosed with something yet. I don't know why I didn't think of it before because I interact with a lot of people that are going through that right now. I thought I'd make this video not just for those that have gone through it or for those that know someone that's going through it. Now honestly, I have to say it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. Especially the things with invisible diseases. First, a lot of people assume that, you know, all of a sudden something comes up, it's a recent problem, you go see the doctor and get it figured out. And it doesn't work that way. Man, do we wish it doesn't work that way. Talking with a lot of people, it's not just not just me. A lot of people, they will take quite some time before even going to see a doctor. Why? Well, it's because you're going through all these weird symptoms and you're, you're noticing these big changes in your body. And then you're trying to ignore them, you know, trying to come up with an excuse for why they're there. Or you think they're just gonna go away. And then later, when you're realizing they're not going away and they may worsen, that you might be crazy. Now that might sound absolutely stupid to those that have no idea what I'm talking about. I felt really stupid. You don't go into the doctor and give them a blood test and they say you got it. Because it's an invisible disease, something that you don't, it doesn't work that way. There's a series of tests you have to go through to rule out all these other things. Um, to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia correctly, the average person takes three to five years to get diagnosed. It took me five years. Once it either A, gets bad enough where you do force yourself to get in, or B, finally talk yourself up to it, or both, which was a lot of my case, until you feel like you can't anymore. I brought it up to Nathan, my husband. We didn't realize it was that long ago, but I was 18 when I started going in and getting tested. Well, I actually didn't even know what fibromyalgia was. It was a doctor that brought it up to me. A lot of these diseases, they mimic one another, and which can be very dangerous because, all right, these diseases, most of them aren't gonna kill you, but there's no cure for it. You're gonna live with this agonizing pain and all these symptoms until you die. You know, that's not very comforting either. Some cases, like um, lupus, you know, and other things can kill you if they're not treated in time. Once you work yourself, to get into that process, then it's the waiting game. As I said, it took me five years. The blood tests and all these different tests, it, it can take forever to go through. And then once you finally get a diagnosis, then you have to get set up with the right doctor. Usually for fibromyalgia, something like that is a rheumatologist. And that can take two to three months to even see that kind of doctor, that specialist. And that's if you get a specialist that believes in your disease. I've had a specialist that looked at me and physically looked at me and said, well, I don't see anything wrong with you. Some of the stages you can go through when you're in the waiting game, well, first of all, you're feeling very vulnerable. It's a, it's a really hard time to go through because you're iffy on yourself, but in your gut, that's the best way I can describe it. It's in your gut, you feel, you just know something's wrong. You just know it is. I mean, nobody knows your body better than you do. And having the patience to wait it all out, to keep getting poked, to keep talking to this doctor and that doctor. I have like four or five different doctors. Then it can leave you feeling sad, of course, because you're kind of grieving over how you used to feel. Um, and you know, today that is still hard. It's really hard to think what you're missing out on, especially when you haven't even had a chance to start a career that you really wanted, or you feel guilty because you had kids and then all of this, come, all of this comes tumbling down. You know, it, it's, it's a hard process, um, which can cause depression and then can also cause um, anger, which makes sense. We're only human. You know, we go from living a pretty normal life to whatever this is. To me, in my personal opinion, I think it's harder to have a normal before you become ill. You know, yeah, it's awful, awful to be born with something, but then you don't know what you're missing out on, if that makes any sense. Then once you're finally diagnosed, you're like, yes, finally, you got a name on whatever this is, and you go find research and everything, and then you have something like fibromyalgia, CFS, ME, you come to realize that there's 
you got a lot more questions than you did answers, but you're still relieved to know that you're not crazy. And then you have trial and error for medicine. You're gonna find stuff you could be allergic to, you're gonna find stuff that makes pain worse, you're gonna find stuff that really, really helps, but you have some really bad side effects you can't handle. And then, let's say you wanna stay on that medicine, but you have a trouble, it makes you, makes it hard for you to fall asleep. So then you take a pill that make, that helps you fall asleep. Well then that one causes, you know, it's a chain. So it's, it's really hard to find the right combination to try to just help make it tolerable. So if you are in the spot right now, you're stuck in the middle, you don't have that nice normal health anymore, but yet you weren't diagnosed yet, so you're not part of that group yet. You're in the middle. And I know how frustrating that is. A lot of my Spoonie family here will completely understand. The best thing I would say is find someone to talk to. You know, do some research. If you suspect a, a certain illness, search them. Something you can share with your doctor too. Find a support group or talk to people that have whatever it is that you believe you may have that can definitely help you feel tons better. That's what helped me feel better. That's why I started this channel. I guess the best thing I could tell you that really, really helped me was, I don't know if it's that healthy or not, but distract yourself from your health, putting your mind and focusing it on someone else, like your crazy daughter. It was my family. I'm finding little things that make you feel good. Chronic pain, issues, make sure you're careful and do them lightly so you don't want to stop them all together. That'll make it real work. That'll make it much worse too. Now, if you're watching this because you have a loved one that is going through this right now, help them research it a little bit. Help them find support. Be their support. Let them know that uh, you're there to help and you believe in them and that you'll be a friend along the way because I'll tell you what, once this comes through, as this person's going through this there's going to be this door that opens and people just walking on out of their lives because they don't believe them or that person's a hypochondriac. People will drop like flies. But to be honest with you, as heart-wrenching as that is, that's a great opportunity to find out who your real true friends are. Oh, by the way, I've also um, been thinking and thinking of a shirt to make for those that are undiagnosed. So you know how... We have cool spoony merchandise. But what about those that aren't diagnosed yet? So I should really put some thought into that. Now, um, your homework today, Spoonies, share what was one of the best ways that helped you get through this or how someone can help you get through this. It could help someone going through this. You never know. But just having someone believe in you can go a long way. Let me know your thoughts and um, I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks a bunch for watching. I'll see you next video. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you liked it and share it. And if you're new here, I'd love it if you guys joined and become a part of our Spoonie family. Alright, thanks again you guys. Bye-bye.